There were, simultaneously, many Jedi Masters who served on any of the various Jedi Councils that each met in a room atop one of the spires of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. When all the members of the complete Jedi Order were summoned during a time of crisis, it was called a Convocation, and several of these occurred throughout the history of the Jedi and New Jedi Orders. When all the members of the full Jedi Council met in the High Council Chamber, it was called the Gathering, and an oath was recited before their meetings could begin. This oath went, With all of us may the Force be, and may the peace of this temple be ours, a place open to thought and speech, a realm of mutual respect and a haven of shared noble purpose. Let us take these seats together, with no one above the others. May we work together, free from the restraints of ego and jealousy, at this gathering and all others to come. Although classically there were considered to only be two types of Jedi Masters, the Warrior Master and the Sage Master, at the beginning of the Clone Wars era, there were three lesser councils of masters, corresponding to three lesser ranks below the Jedi High Council. The first was the Jedi Guardian, corresponding to the Council of First Knowledge. The second was the Jedi Consular, a master of the Council of Reconciliation. The third was the Jedi Sentinel, Officer of the Council of Reassignment. At that time, there were no less than 13 types of Master. Jedi Master Guardians included Jedi Ace Pilots, Master Lightsaber Instructors, Jedi Peacekeepers like the Temple Security Force, and Jedi Weapon Masters. Jedi Master Consulars included Jedi Ambassadors, Jedi Diplomats, Jedi Healers, Jedi Lore Keepers, Jedi Researchers, and Jedi Seers. Jedi Master Sentinels included Jedi Investigators, Jedi Shadow, Spies, and Jedi Watchmen on long-term assignment to a specific location. At the top of the High Council Tower, the southeast spire of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, in the High Council Chamber, the Jedi High Council of Masters met. The Jedi High Council was comprised of twelve Jedi Masters, each member being elected only by unanimous vote of the current members. Leading members of the Jedi High Council during the years leading up to the Clone Wars included legendary names such as Grand Master Yoda, Master Yaddle, Master Jocasta Nu, Master sifo Master Dooku, Master Mace Windu, Master Yariel Poof, Master Saisi Tin, Master Even Peel, Master Aoth Koth, Master Plo Koon, Knight Kayadi Mundi, Master Shock T, Master Kit Fisto, Master Obi Wan Kenobi, and Knight Guardian Anakin Skywalker. During the Clone Wars, Master Swordsman Mace Windu served as the Master of the Jedi Order, and Yoda served as Grand Master. The most important relics of the Jedi Order were four stone tablets symbolizing the original edification of the Jedi Code. The five precepts of the Jedi Code, as established by Odon Ur, were based on a five lines long prehistoric mantra about the Force. Four stanzas of this precept were assigned to four pillars of stone aligned to the cardinal directions of the spires and kept in a room in the square ziggurat base of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. The last of the five stanzas, stating, There is no passion, 
there is serenity, spoke on the process of becoming a Jedi Knight, and was symbolized by no stone at the center, below the tranquility spire. The first stanza of the Jedi Code, stating, There is no emotion, there is peace, is symbolized in stone by the image of a rose shattering a sword. The second stanza, stating, There is no ignorance, there is knowledge, is symbolized by the image of a structure shattering at its foundation. The fourth stanza, stating, There is no chaos, there is harmony, is symbolized by a planetary system orbiting a star. The fifth stanza, stating, There is no death, there is the force, is symbolized by the wild growth of a rose vine. The second most important relics of the Jedi Order were the collection of unique cubical data storage devices from around the galaxy and throughout its entire history. In the center of the Jedi archives, sealed behind a door that can only be unlocked using the Force, was a room thought to be impregnable until it was finally breached by a bounty hunter named Cad Bane during the Clone Wars. This was the sacred holocron vault that was allowed to be entered only by Jedi Masters. Holocrons come in all shapes and sizes. They are usually rhombic or regular solid polyhedral forms comprised of a combination of several internested data storage layers with transparent flat faces and metallic edges. On the clear flat faces on each side of the holocron, there will be a unique pattern made of a metal inlay, and it is only by refitting the sides together using these patterns as a guide that the holocron can be unlocked by a force user. The key to the holocron's figurative lock is to place a crystal data storage shard into the center of the holocron form. This will activate the holocron's gatekeeper, an imprinted self-awareness, that can then access any of the data that can be retrieved using that particular combination of holocron lock and crystal data chip key. Although holocrons can be any solid polyhedral form, those used by the Jedi Order and stored in the holocron vault in the Jedi archives of the Temple on Coruscant were most commonly cubical in shape. This form of holocron could only be opened by using the force to telekinetically rearrange the sides of the cube to open it up and reveal its hollow interior, similarly to how one would align the focusing crystal of a lightsaber. A crystal data shard is then lowered into this hollowed out box. Following this, a third step comprised of a second rearrangement of the components of the solid portions of the cube into a third shape for the holocron's polyhedral form. Following these three steps, a holographic projection of the data cube's gatekeeper should appear to guide one as they access the data within. There are three primary forms of holocron of the most importance to the Jedi Order as relics and historical records. The first is the standard form of holocron used by most of the Jedi to record and thus to pass on what they have learned, and thus teach others. There are at least 18 known Jedi holocrons of this essential form. The second important form of holocron are Sith holocrons. These were most commonly shaped, rather than cubically like the Jedi's, as a tetrahedra of a four-sided pyramid with three faces and one base, all triangles. There are no less than 20 known Sith holocrons of this sort from throughout the eras since their invention, around 3,000 years prior to the first Jedi cube form of holocron. The most important form of holocron was the single and unique Great Holocron, Although the Sith thus seemed to have previously invented this technology, which was then applied by the Jedi Order, 
The dodecahedronal great holocron probably predates them both. The recordings on it by Jedi date back as far as 3,997 BBY, when it was in the possession of Jedi Master Arka Jeth. It seems to have been in the possession of the Jedi Order ever since, surviving even the sacking of the Jedi Temple during Order 66 and making its way to the new Jedi Order Library on Osis. The technology to build holocrons was originally given to the Sith King Addis by Rakata warriors from Lehan during the era of their infinite empire, a previous species that had become corrupted by use of the dark side of the Force. Although these Rakata, also called Builders, developed technology capable of terraforming a wasteland planet into one hospitable to life, it is unknown if they were the original inventors of holocron technology, or if it predates even them, and originated with the celestial architects, the Gri Enclave, or the Qua, all from 1 million to 30,000 BBY, or even with the Force Demons, like Wutzak, a sentient crystalline entity who had ruled the galaxy even prior to then.